Another great thing about social media that I think we've seen more than anything in the last few weeks is it's a great way to get information out as soon as possible. I first found out about the earthquakes in Japan on Facebook. Um, so here you see text Red Cross to donate to the tsunami relief. I mean, people had those out so fast it was unbelievable. YouTube, I don't know how many of you heard about this story, but this poor Japanese exchange student in California, um, her village was the village that was took like the biggest hit from the earthquake and the tsunami. The entire thing was wiped out. She had no idea if her entire family that lived in one house was even still alive. She couldn't obviously get through on phones or anything like that. A few days later, she got an email from a friend who said, oh my god, I just saw your sister on YouTube. So she goes on YouTube, and what had happened is, is their houses were one of the few homes that actually were still standing. Mm -hmm. There were rescue workers coming through. They just happened to have a video. She said, please take this and put it on the internet so my sister knows we're okay. So the sign that she's holding up is saying, we're safe, we're all alive. And that's how she found out her family was still alive, was through YouTube. So I mean, these, the, the power that social media has is just so important. We've been seeing a lot of shelter fires lately around, around the country. I'm not sure if it's a season or what's going on, but we always hope that the worst doesn't happen, but sometimes it does and you need to be prepared. So remember, this could literally help save lives. If you guys have a disaster, posting on your Facebook, we have a fire, we need people here at this time, this place with these supplies, people will come. Just remember to be specific um, and put exactly what you need, when and where, not just a general, the shelter's burning down status update, because otherwise people will just panic and they won't know what to do. On a side note to all those shelter fires, don't, remember, don't forget to have a um, disaster plan in place because you'll need it when you least expect it. And of course, you can post your pets through all of your social media. So that black lab that's been sitting for way too long, make a big deal about him. Get people to put him on their Facebook and retweet posts about him. You know, do a fundraiser for him, anything to get his, get him out there and more prominent in, in the media. This is sweet little Emma. I found her on Pet Finder. Um, so this is an, a great example of what I did is I found a, an adoptable pet on Pet Finder hit share on Facebook, and that's what came up on my Facebook page. On to Twitter. So I know that Twitter, we're just getting used to Facebook, and then Twitter pops up. And it, a lot of people have had a lot of resistance to Twitter. But remember, when Facebook popped up, and we were all still on MySpace, we had a lot of resistance to Facebook, too. So we eventually get used to it and move on. The one thing to remember with all of these social medias, because eventually more are going to emerge, Facebook will become obsolete at some point, um, is that they want your business. They want you to come to their website, so it is in their best interest to make this as user-friendly as possible. So they're there to make it easy for you to use. So don't be afraid to go in there and just play around. Um, the example I always use is that my dad, wonderful guy, raised as a good old country boy in upstate New York. One day I got a friend's request from him on Facebook and it almost not to be over because I'm like, my dad's on Facebook. Um, and, and I mean, it took them a few days. There were times where his status updates were clearly replies to other people. So in our news feed, it would be like, thanks, Larry. It's good to see you. And we're like, what are you talking about, Dad? But after a week, he managed and he figured it out. Now he's a Facebook whiz. So if my dad can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. So the same thing really goes for Twitter. Twitter, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, is it's an exchange of quick, frequent text messages. Um, they're kind of just like status updates for Facebook. They're 140 characters or less. They're really quick bits of information. Tweets are what are sent to your followers. So instead of friends, like you have on Facebook, it's just a different terminology. You have followers on Twitter. Tweets can also be posted to your Facebook profile or your blog. So there's another cross-posting to get more word out there. There's even something you can set up where your tweets on Twitter are just automatically posted for you on your Facebook so you can streamline it so you don't have to post in two places. Tweets are searchable on Twitter. And there's a culture, there's a language. For those of you that know Twitter, they've got their own little terminology. Um, so it takes a little bit longer to learn, but it's pretty easy to catch on. Can I ask you a Facebook question? Sure. When you share, like, let's say you post a pet from Pet Finder mm -hmm. on your page, okay. 
you can see how many people like it. You can see the numbers easily, right? If somebody, yeah. if somebody shares it out, do mm -hmm. you see that? Do you know if people are doing it? If somebody else shared it? Yeah. Do you see if people are doing anything more with it? You know, I don't know that I've ever seen that somebody shared. If they're your friend, you can see it. You can see it on the news feed, but you mean you get like an alert? No. I mean, is there any way to know if anyone's doing anything other than liking it? Do you know if anyone's? If they shared it, you can go through your news feed and you'll see that it was shared. I don't think, unlike when you get a new comment on your wall, I don't think you'll, you can set it to get like an, an update okay, or there an is alert. But tracking in there, you can see it. You can go through your newsfeed, absolutely, and see who's shared it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So here, I'm gonna give you three common Twitter terms that you're gonna hear that are just the basics that are good to know. Retweeting, so retweeting is sharing someone else's tweet. So in a sense, it's kind of like the sharing. Somebody else put something out there that was great, you wanna pass it along to your followers, you're gonna retweet it. Um, to do this, the rule is to put RT, which just means retweet, and that's just basically so people know that it's not your original work. At the start of the retweet, and to include the Twitter username of the person you are retweeting. That's confusing, I know. So for example, uh, my mom has two pet goats that were rescued in a raid. They were taken out of field crates, and she is obsessed with these goats. And because she lives in Colorado, it gets cold, so she bought large dog coats, and they wear their coats during the winter. So she has set up a Twitter page for them called Goats and Coats. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, Goats and Coats are very active on Twitter. Who knew Goats loved Twitter so much? Um, and so what they did is they retweeted something. My mom has her own Twitter page, so she runs too. Um, and so my mom said, hey, animal lovers, please retweet. Bookmark and join our show on Monday with emergency vets, Dr. Fitzgerald. Goats and Coats were kind enough to retweet that for my mom, so their followers got to see it. So they did retweet at Anthony Mitchell and then did the message. So now they got a chance to see that same opportunity. Hashtags. It actually took me a while to get the hashtag thing down, but I'll, I'll try to explain it the best that I can. Um, so a hashtag is the number sign, and it's in a sense used to mark a subject. So when you hear on the news this was trending on Twitter, it just means everybody was talking about it. So for instance, Japan is hugely trending on Twitter right now, and everybody's talking about it. So if you want to say, what are other people looking or talking about with Japan, when you search, you can search number sign Japan, because what people do is they put that number sign and the subject so that it's easily searchable as a topic that's trending. So for instance, we've donated money to the Coalition Heart as well as Ark and Wispa to help the animals in Japan. Please support them. Hashtag Japan, hashtag animal rescue. So anybody who's now searching for things in animal rescue or Japan, their, their tweet's gonna come up because they did that little hashtag. Again, that one is something to be familiar with. Don't feel like you need to leave here a hashtag expert. But I would, I would write it down as something to Google and become familiar with. At replies, which are also known as mentions, that's a way, instead of, for instance, like a status update, that's a way to talk to somebody directly. So if you want to talk at somebody, so for instance, I wanted to talk at Goats and Coats. So I said, hey, at Goats and Coats, say ba'a to my social media workshop folks in Michigan. They didn't get back to me for 21 hours because apparently goats are slacking. Um, <laughs> they said, sorry, we're so late, we were in bed. <laughs> the rough life of the Goats and Coats. But as you can see, because I put the at and then their username, that goes directly to them. So they know I'm talking to them. They said, hey, at Animal Rescue Gal, and talked back to me. And this is just an example of the Maddie Sun um, Twitter page, as you can see. Um, they are, there's the retweet at the top, so they're asking people to please put this out on your Twitter pages. Um, and they're very active, so they're, they're a good, good group to follow if you're not already. Twitter widgets, just so you know, if you already have a, um, a Twitter page, or I'm sorry, a website or a blog, you can put a Twitter widget on there and that shows your Twitter feed what you're saying is directly fed onto your website. 
This keeps people abreast of what you're saying as well as let, is another way to let people know you're on Twitter so that they can follow you if they themselves are on Twitter. I have a question. Sure. Is there anything like that on Facebook? Or is it just Twitter, like if you want to? No, you can do the same thing with Facebook, absolutely. How I've done it with, for instance, with my blog is it's usually the widget within the blog, okay. but you can also go into your Facebook features and they'll say put Facebook on your website or your blog and you can do the same thing, absolutely. Remember who you follow is visible to your followers. Do you guys know the show Bleep My Dad Says? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was created off of a Twitter page. This guy literally set up a Twitter page and all he did was make comments about the hilarious things that his dad said. Um, as we all know, that's Bleep My Dad Says is not the actual name of the Twitter page. So consider that when you have a professional page, people can see who you're following. And if you have a very conservative following base, they may not be too happy with that. So maybe keep that stuff to your personal Twitter page and not your professional one. Share humor. Everybody likes to laugh and feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> so you don't have anything profound to say, but you haven't touched base in a while. Everybody loves lolcats. Go on there, find something funny and post it. Measuring success, it's not about how many friends or followers you have, it's about the quality of them. I remember when MySpace came out, people were like, it was like a game to get like 2,000 friends. They didn't know three quarters of those people. It's not like that really when you have a Facebook organization page. It's about the quality of the people that follow you. You get those few people that are just your biggest champions, they will come through for you every time. They'll help with donations, recruit other friends, share your content, subscribe to your email list. My favorite example is the last organization that I was with. We had what I like to call a very passionate volunteer. And we had this big event, and it came the day of the event where we were running around like chickens with our heads cut off, and two of my volunteers flaked. And we were just in a lurch. So I called one of my friends who had a ton of plans that day. She dropped everything to come and help us out. I went in a few hours later, and my very passionate volunteer was giving her this big lecture about why she shouldn't be eating meat and making her feel really bad about not being a vegetarian. And my first thought is, wow, we'll never get her to come back and help us again on a, on a last minute. And, and it was really tempting for a while to just never call on this volunteer again, but quite honestly, she loves what she does and she's very passionate about it. So I kept her on my Facebook page. I can tell you, anytime I need anything, the word spread on anything, she's the first one to do it. She's the first one to donate. Um, so remember, those people that are very passionate about what they do, they're going to speak more volumes than having 1,000 followers. It's about the kind of people that are following you. YouTube is a fantastic resource. How many of you have your own YouTube page? <laughs> Great. So again, if you guys are a little weary of the whole YouTube and uploading videos and taking videos, this is the time to call on your, your high school and college volunteers to, to at least help with the setup or, or help you with tutorials. You can create your own channel, you can post multiple videos, you gather subscribers who receive a message from you and they can add a video when, or see when you've added a video. Um, you can embed your YouTube videos anywhere, so your pet, find your pet profile, um, your website, Facebook. Again, a great opportunity for young volunteers. This is an example of the Pet Finder Foundation's YouTube page. You can see it's, um, here's all of the, the bio, the information about them, and then it has a list of all of their videos that people can subscribe to. Um, and these are just ways that you can uh, search. So if you see here in the search field, it's track, neuter, return. And if somebody's looking on how to do that great track, neuter, return video, um, these are what they're gonna, are gonna populate. So consider that if you guys want to do a video on training, track, neuter, return, how to run a successful foster program, these little tidbits, it's like having your own TV channel. And you have so many experts at your disposal. We're all experts. So if you look at your, your, your volunteers or your employees and say, you know, what are their strengths, have them do a video. Um, because the more searches, the more times your videos come up in these searches, again, the more traffic you're driving to your website.
This is an example of a blog where um, the blogger embedded one of her YouTube pages right into her blog. So now it's in two places, her blog and her YouTube page. So don't forget whatever social media you, ch you decide works best for you to always cross post to drive the traffic back and forth between all of your sites. And again, training at your fingertips. My fiance, I call him the chief thing fixer of the house. Um, and he's in charge of fixing all the things. And nine times out of mm -hmm. 10, he doesn't know how to fix it on his own unless it's car related. So he goes to YouTube. He's fixed, so, we've saved so much money on plumbers just because he's figured out how to fix this stuff on YouTube. It's amazing. You can learn how to do anything on YouTube. Um, so again, people are going there to learn how to do stuff. They're pulling up videos. So make sure it's your video that they're pulling up and not somebody else's. Take advantage of that. Write this down, addthis.com. All of those fun little widgets, share this on Facebook, share this on Twitter, um, share this on StumbleUpon, all of these, you can get them here to add right to your blogs or your websites. Um, and it's really easy, you literally just say, okay, I've got a WordPress blog, this is the style of buttons I want, and then you can, it'll give you the code to add it for you. It makes it so easy for you. So again, things are constantly changing. MySpace is now obsolete. I may be dating myself, but I remember using Friendster. That's long gone. <laughs> um, Facebook is, is eventually, I'm sure much to Mark's dismay, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> it's gonna be obsolete at some point. We're gonna move on. So the thing is, is just to kind of keep abreast of what's gonna be new. What are people using? What are your, your adoption and donor audiences using? Um, these are two online industry publications, Mashable.com and Reagan.com, that kind of keep abreast, so it doesn't much check in with them every now and then. Again, for definitions and explanations, YouTube.com, Google.com, HowStuffWorks.com, all step-by-step -step instructions, not only on the simplistics of how to use Facebook and Twitter, but if you already know all that stuff, how to best utilize it. And of course, outreach at petfinder.com. We're here for you. You guys have any questions and you just want that live person to talk to you, we're happy to talk to you and, and help you through any questions that you might have. I'm at the booth later. Please come by. I'm happy to answer questions that you may have about how to better utilize your social media. So this is just a glimpse into what's coming up. How many of you are familiar with Foursquare? So Foursquare is basically the ability to check in where you are from your phone. So for instance, yesterday I went to the Humane Society and I checked in that I was there and also left a little message that they had tons of cute puppies in their little puppy room that needed to get adopted. <laughs> so the thing about Foursquare is not only do you, you check in to say, you know, I was here, um, the more check-ins you have, you get like, like virtual keys to the city that unlocks new features. Um, as you can see, uh, Felipe is the mayor of the Wyandotte Animal Shelter. You get, if you are the one that's like starting to check in the most, which probably are gonna be your employees, um, they get to be like the mayor, the king, like they have all these cool designations. Um, so check into this because you want people checking in at your shelter. So if, if, you, if you haven't already checked out Foursquare, it may be something that you guys wanna make sure that your shelters or, or your mobile adoption centers are on the map because it's another great way for people to see where are people hanging out? Are they hanging out at the animal shelter? Are they hanging out at your adoption mobile adoption center? Um, because it's a great way to make sure people know that you're literally on the map. I have a question about those. Sure. Um, on your smartphone, you go on Foursquare, mm -hmm. and you check in to wherever you're at. Is that what you mean? It, it uses your phone's GPS, GPS and it can tell exactly where you are. Which is creepy to some people. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say check in at a public place, don't check in at home. <laughs> so be relevant and listen. Again, like Facebook, um, you're not tweeting just to tweet for the sake of tweeting. Um, the point is to say something that changes the world a little bit to benefit animals who cannot speak. Each short, relevant message has the potential to create a revolution for your pets. And again, I'm going to repeat it. Don't bum people out. 
there's going to be those hard stories. Share away by all means, but don't make that the mainstay of your message or people are going to just get depressed and they're not going to want to read what you have to say. So people love happy endings. I say that's why most Hollywood movies don't ever have sad endings, most of them. Um, and that's because people like to be uplifted. So if you have a sad story, even if a pet didn't make it, follow it up with something like, please donate in his or her memory so that we can you know, save other animals and this death wasn't in vain. Find something to add to it because we don't want to depress people. This is one of my foster kittens, Kane, who was obsessed with my makeup and always sat in my shoes. So he has some identity issues. <laughs> Any questions? I finished a little early, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. I guess. Yeah, I've got two real quick ones. Um, you, I saw a icon, an icon for blog po uh, blog pause, I think. For um, blog oh, pause. Oh, blog pause. Okay, can you elaborate on that a little bit? You know, actually, so blog pause is um, is it's it, just another. Is it another blogging site? It's another site where you, where bloggers can go. So I don't actually know a whole lot about blog pause. It's just something that's popped up relevantly in animal welfare. So I would definitely recommend Googling it because I don't think I can explain it. But it's probably animal it related. It, it's animal specific, yes. Okay. Yep. And also real quick, um, you mentioned the Pet Finder iPhone app. Is that available for other smartphones other than iPhone? We're working on that because I have an Android and I'm an Android lover and I want that app. Okay. So um, we're definitely looking at making those apps available for other phones, so stay tuned. So strictly for iPhone? For right now, it's currently. iPhone, iPhone okay. or iPad. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, is there a way to do a, a Facebook page for your organization without having to link it to your name? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, and I had this question yesterday. I'm probably not supposed to tell you this, but <laughs> I personally have two Facebook pages. I have a professional page and I have a personal page. People that I work with professionally don't need to and probably don't want to know the personal dribble that comes out of my mouth. Um, so and it's just, quite honestly, they don't need to see pictures of me and my parents all smoochy on the beach. You know, and, and it's a matter of, I know that the woman that I spoke to yesterday, she had issues because she was worried about a lot of political stuff that was being um, and so I do have two pages and um, if people ever find me and they're professional people and they find my personal page and friends request me I will then go into my professional page and friends request them with a little note that says hey this is the main Facebook that I use um, in terms of how it's linked um, all of my Facebook pages are set up with my professional um, page using my professional page but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be seen as the person running that page you can hide it you have to go in your privacy settings um, and so if it is your personal page you're using I would highly suggest that you hide yourself um, assuming that you don't necessarily want people you work with professionally on your personal page don't even want Facebook page. <laughs> well and so, so do you have a personal page Okay, so what I would do is set it up and, and decide, if you're not going to keep it for yourself personally, then just designate that one professional page. And that's just all you're going to use it for is professional reasons. So you yourself may not have to ever write anything on your private page, but you have it there and you can use it to run your, your group page. Um, I was wondering, can't you on your Facebook, uh, can't you just share with specific people induce privacy settings you can the great thing about facebook is it has privacy settings that you can customize mm -hmm. and quite honestly what i do with some of the people that i really don't want finding my personal page you can block people from even being able to find you and so i'll block them so they can't even see me or find me on my personal one um and you can customize it but the thing is, is it's still on the internet so even if you block people or make it super private, that, there's never a guarantee that it's not going to get out there on the internet some way or another. Even if you have a, a jilted friend who copies your entire page and puts it out there, I mean, just remember, nothing is 100%. So do you, do you play around with those privacy settings? You can customize them. The great thing about Facebook is they have, when you're in your privacy settings, you'll see at the top it says, view this profile as and you can type in the name of any of your friends and see what they see when they view your profile so you can make sure that you set your settings properly. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a good feature. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. Um, my Facebook was hacked back about a month ago. That and my email. Uh, what else? I mean, I I have a new one now. I just keep waiting for any day for it to be hacked again. A couple of things on on people. Her question. Her Facebook was hacked. And you'll see that from time to time, especially when you get these really weird postings from your friends. And, yeah. yeah, and you can tell that that wasn't them. Um, make sure that your, your password is really difficult. And make sure to change it. But I mean, like, change it before you get hacked. Change it every so often to go in. Sometimes you just can't help if they're really good at what they do. I'll tell you right now what lets in those spammers and those hackers are your apps. So when you're downloading those apps of what's my moon sign or what's my horoscope or the games you play, those kinds of things. I even, I just downloaded an app for Japan and it was like, it's, all it was is it put a little badge on your profile picture that says save Japan. It ended up spamming my friends. Mm -hmm. So those apps, yeah, you have to be careful because they well, do share yeah, public I, information. Yeah. And, and actually causes can do that too, where it asks mm -hmm. for access to your information and to your profile and to be able to post your page. So you have to be careful, even if you think it's for a good cause, make sure that you watch what you do when you accept them. Absolutely, they can be tricky. It is no coincidence that those ads that appear on the side of your Facebook page are very relevant to you. That's specific, they do that, they have that information, so just be very careful as with anything what you share online. Yeah. Um, I'm just talking about the Facebook ad, but you can like make the ad for a nonprofit. Like, you yes. can put your logo in, and you can you like your ad. You can have those ads be for your organization, and from what I understand, they're actually reasonably priced. I don't have the pricing, but you can make those for your organization. That's a really good point. Give some extra advertising dollars in your budget. Yes. On LinkedIn, it doesn't really have similar to Facebook. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, but it's definitely more. Professional. It's more professional. You're not going to see a lot of those ads popping up or stealing your information. Um, I mean, we can if if you're the type that likes to maybe pad your resume a little bit, you can't do that on LinkedIn because everybody can see it. So you can have that former boss and say. You never did that. Um, so keep that in mind, but yeah, it's, it's more of a professional site. Yes. Which, which blog site do you prefer? I personally like WordPress, um, but that's because I like to monetize my blog. So I have you know Amazon partners and, and, and that kind of thing on there. And so for me, WordPress works better, and they have a lot of apps. But I've also used Blogger, and I recommend Blogger for people that maybe aren't are new to the blogging game. Um, I've just found that it's more user friendly for for the novice blogger. Anybody else? All right, great. Well, again, don't hesitate. You, here's my email address. Email me if you have any questions. I'll be at the booth. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.